In this video, we're going to solve the equation x to the fourth minus 2 root 3x squared plus 4 equals 0. We want to solve this polynomial equation and find all complex roots. Now, you might think at first this 2 root 3, like what the heck's going on with that coefficient? That's actually going to be a blessing for us, uh, but we'll see that a little bit later here. Um, you'll also notice that this, this equation is missing some terms, right? We have an x to the fourth, we have an x squared, and we have a constant. Um, there's no x cubed, there's no x term. Uh, and so this actually forms what we call a bi-quadratic equation. It's like a quadratic equation, but instead of being like ax squared plus bx plus c, it's actually x to the fourth and x squared, right? Because x to the fourth is just x squared squared. So we can still solve this like a quadratic equation, uh, but instead of getting linear factors, we would get quadratic factors. Now that two root three is kind of concerning me in terms of factoring. Um, so I actually might instead choose the quadratic formula, right? You know, usually goes like x equals negative e plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. But instead of being x equals, it's actually going to be x squared equals. Because uh, again, that's that's the fundamental term in that situation. x squared equals the negative b, so we get 2 root 3 plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a like so. Let's see if we can simplify this a little bit before we go forward. So we get two root three, mostly it's discriminant we have to simplify here. So when you take two root three, when you square that, two squared is four, the square root of three squared is three, so four times three is a 12. And then with the other one, you get this negative four times one times four, that's a 16, this is all over two. So we can actually see now our discriminant's gonna turn out to be negative. Um, so we get the square root of negative 4 right here, um, which the square root of that turns out to be plus or minus 2i over 2. You can factor out a 2 from the numerator, so you get root 3 plus or minus just i here over 2. The 2s cancel, and so we get, summarizing here, that x squared equals root 3 plus i and root three minus i. So the quadratic formula did turn out to be super helpful in this situation, but we didn't solve the equation yet. We have x squared equals the square root of three plus or minus i. So we have to then take the square root of these things. So we get x equals the square root of root three plus i, like so, plus or minus. And then we have plus or minus the square root of three minus i. Again, so these, these are, uh, excuse me, the square root of that. So those are the solutions, technically speaking, but it's like, what number is that, right? We have to compute these square roots of the complex numbers. And so let's investigate those. If we take the modulus of the square root of 3 plus i, well, you have to take the square root of root 3 squared plus 1 squared. This gives you the square root of three plus one, which is the square root of four, which is equal to two. I want you to notice here that this actually doesn't matter on this middle term right here, because uh, it would change every, it wouldn't change anything in the, in the remaining process. So both of these numbers have a modulus of two. What are their arguments? Their arguments will of course be a little bit different. If you do the argument arg of root three plus i, like so, we have to compute, compute arctangent of one over the square root of three. This happens at pi six. We are in the first quadrant, notice how it's positive, positive. So this is gonna give us pi sixth. Um, if we do the argument of root three minus i, this does change things a little bit, mostly the quadrant, right? You're gonna get now a negative one over root three. We're gonna get an angle that references is it's, it's going to reference to pi six but which quadrant are we in now we're in positive negative so this is actually giving me the fourth quadrant right there so we need an angle which references to pi sixth in the fourth quadrant that's 11 pi sixth like so and so then let's let's revisit our numbers from above we get that our solutions are going to look like x equals plus or minus the square root of well these numbers two e to the pi i sixth, and then plus or minus the square root of two e to the 11 pi i over six, like so. All right, so taking the square root is the same thing as taking the one half power. So we need to times the denominator of that x divided by two. So our solutions are gonna be x equals plus or minus the square root of two times e to the pi i over 12, and then likewise, plus or minus the square root of 2 e to the pi i, uh, the 11 pi i over 12, like so. 
So these are going to be our solutions. So what do you do with like, what do you do with pi i over 12? Let's do this to the to the side here. E pi i over 12. So we have to compute cosine of pi over 12 plus i sine of pi over 12. Pi over 12, of course, is the same thing as 15 degrees. You might remember that one. Uh, we did that previously. That's going to give us root 6 plus root 2 over 4. And then here, we're going to get i times the square root of 6 minus square root of 2 over 4. Like so. That's e to the pi i over 12. Uh, the other one is similar when you do, when you do the 11. Because uh, notice that 11 pi 12ths is the angle in the second quadrant that references to pi 12ths, aka 15 degrees. So that one's going to look like e to the 11 pi i over 12. You get, of course, cosine of 11 pi over 12 plus i, don't forget the i, sine of 11 pi over 12. Notice, of course, that pi minus pi 12ths is 11 pi 12ths. That's how I got the reference angle. So in, this, in the second quadrant, this is going to be negative cosine of pi 12ths plus i sine of pi 12ths. So you would end up with, in this case, a negative root 6 minus root 2 over 4. Uh, in this case, then you're going to get plus i root 6 minus root 2 all over 4. You get these numbers here. And so then let's consider then the solutions, the four solutions now that we've taken care of these. Uh, exponential expressions using Euler's identity there. So we get x equals the square root of 2 times e to the pi i 12. Uh, and so we're going to take this number here and times it by the square root of 2. Um, square root of 2 there, that's going to give you a factor of 2. Because uh, notice notice that whenever you see these things here, like the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2, that's just the same thing as the square root of 2 times the square root of 3 plus 1. And a similar statement can be said for these ones right here. So when you times things by the square root of 2, you're going to get 2 over 4. You can just factor the 4 out of everything there. 2 over 4 times what's left behind. You get root 3 plus 1 plus 2i over 4 times root 3 minus 1, like so. The next one, very similar. Uh, you're going to end up with 2 over 4 times, uh, and by, by the next one, I mean we're going to choose the negative case this time, right? So really, it's just, well, let's just put the plus or minus in there for the moment. Uh, that, that's kind of messy. Never mind. Uh, we'll put a negative right there, root 3 plus 1, and then a negative right there. Uh, so now let's move on to this case over here using the 11 pi i over 12 that we were considering down here. Uh, and so in that situation, again, take out the 2 over 4, leaving behind a negative root 3 minus 1. And then for the next one, uh, you're going to get a 2 fourths i times root 3 minus 1, like so. And then if you times that thing by negative 1, you get negative 2 fourths, negative root 3 minus 1 minus 2 fourths i root 3 minus 1. And then let's simplify those expressions to some degree. So x equals the first one. Um, in the end, we end up with root 3 plus 1 over 2. And then we're going to get plus i root 3 minus 1 over 2. Uh, next, we, we'll just get that same number times by negative 1. So you get negative root 3 plus 1 over 2, minus i root 3 minus 1 over 2. Then we'll do our third one right here. Uh, we're going to get a negative root 3 plus 1 over 2. And then we're going to get a i root 3 minus 1 over 2. And then the last one, I uh, kind of out of space, so I'll just put it down below. It's just the, th it's just the third one times negative 1. So that's going to give me root 3 plus 1 over 2, and then a minus i root 3 minus 1 over 2. And so we've now found the four complex roots to this polynomial. Yeah, it, at first it started out pretty good, just how to use the quadratic formula. Then, you know, we have to take the complex square roots. It got a little bit messy, but we worked through it. Using the trigonometric forms, we're able to do these things. Uh, we're, well, yeah, we're able to do them. I guess there's not much more to say than that. And so that brings us to the end of lecture 34 and also brings us to the end of our lecture, our chapter, I should say, about complex numbers and how we can use uh, trigonometry to actually help us work through complex algebraic problems, like how we're able to solve this polynomial equation 
using trigonometry, a technique that's too advanced for even a college algebra class, you would very much struggle in a place like that. Uh, and it's actually a pretty cool application. Um, if you agree with me, please give these videos a like, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this in the future. And as always, if you have any questions on any of the videos you're watching, any of, any of my math videos, please post your questions in the comments and I'll be glad to answer them. Bye everyone.